I've, uh, I've, I've drunk beer with Lenny Susskind. He's a great guy. Virginia also knows him. Uh, we bumped into him in, in Canada, in, in um, Santa Fe, I think it was. He's a great guy. But I personally, I think he's a believer in the multiverse. And I think the multiverse is completely pernicious. You know, I think that string theory has been the death of theoretical physics. Yeah, right. But still... Uh, and he's one of the major string theorists, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, he's one of the founders, but he, he doesn't call himself a string theorist. Right. He's more open. Right. He, he, he says he's just... A t I interviewed him, by the way. He's a great, great. guy. He's, uh, he's more open to exploring what we're talking about, exploring. I, I think we were both poor he, kids he, he in New York. He wrote a book about the, the, the string theory landscape, which is exactly the... It's the multiverse. The multiverse. Yeah, we were having beer one day, reminiscing that we were both poor kids in New York City. I went to the Bronx High School of Science, a magnet school. Maybe he went to Brooklyn Tech or also the Bronx High School of Science. And he was saying when he was a PhD student, they paid no attention to their teachers. You know, they were all rebels. They were going to create a new field. And he's very disappointed in his current students because they come to him and they ask him to give them a problem. And then they just work on it for the rest of their lives, writing mm. one little paper after another on this. <laughs> you know, so he felt it was sort of disappointing. But those poor students that do that, they're forced to do it by the system. Mm. Now, it mm. doesn't really let you do real, real, real research, in my opinion. And this is a... We were talking to a Nobel Prize winner in biology, one of the creators of molecular biology in Singapore. His name is um, Sidney Brenner. And, and he was in a wheelchair, but his mind was you know, spectacularly sharp. And he said he had a lot of friends who had won Nobel Prizes, you know, creators of molecular biology. And he said none of them could have done the work that gave them the Nobel Prize in the current environment. You know, with the current funding system, the kind of refereeing with oh, the whole yeah, thing. Yeah. And it's a problem. I, I, I avoided the system because I was doing engineering work for an industri in an industrial lab. Mm. And all this stuff that is the reason I was invited here to the Institute for Advanced Study was my hobby. And at that time, uh, an industrial company would tolerate it if one of their employees spent part of his time on blue sky research. I think now... You know, they want to stamp out anybody wasting their time because the stockholders are going to, yeah, yeah. you know, have their hide. So the current environment is not, is not as friendly. Uh, so I A don't know. A lot of the groundbreaking research from the past century wouldn't be published today because the researcher would spend years not publishing any papers and then come up with the idea. Yeah, and you can't do that. that, that yeah, you can't, you can't do, do that anymore. anymore. Yeah. So I think it's very sad, but the bureaucrats want to control what's being done because... Real science is subversive, yeah. and, and people are scared yeah. you know, because it threatens the economy, it has political consequences. Uh, you know, if you come up with a completely new technology, for example. So it's, it's too bad. But I think what's going to happen is that this is an opportunity for Africa, maybe for Morocco, because the, um, Europe and the United States have this immense bureaucracy controlling what people are doing research on making sure that it's relatively trivial work, you know, uh, epsilon advances in existing stuff. And um, the result will be that someone who doesn't follow this system will make revolutionary advances, you know. So a, a country is destroyed by its bureaucracy in the end very often, it seems to me. That was my theory. The bureaucracy was like a cancer that eventually would destroy the, the body of the, of the poor victim. I hope I'm wrong. But, you know, um, I think we have a problem. This notion of shut up and calculate that mm. they talk about in right. physics. Yeah, and also string theory has no interest in experiments. You know, it's, it's some very sophisticated pure math that's very fashionable, uh, you know, in the world of pure math. But I don't think it's, it's physics, really. Yeah. Well, it has been described as a tool, a mathemat mathematical tool that has opened, in some occasions, some new insights into the universe, like the, the holographic principle. Well, yeah, or some, some the, the holographic principle is interesting. And there's also something connected with information theory, with my area, which is this notion that a physical system only has a finite number of bits, which, yeah. strangely enough, grows as the surface area, yeah. not as the volume. The volume. Yeah, this is based on black hole thermodynamics. Yeah. So that, that, that was the point I was getting at, which is we find in various different areas of science a theme that comes back, which is information. 
and we find it in the foundation of, uh, of physics, when we find it in computer science, and people want to explore what is the nature of intelligence. Right, quantum information quantum theory information. now, the attempt to get space and time not as something fundamental, but coming out from qubit entanglement exactly. yeah. as an emergent property. Yeah. So uh, a lot of us find the notion of information an inspiring one in different areas. Certainly, uh, molecular biology is based on biological information, yeah. which is DNA you know, and computer technology. So that's why some of us say, hey, maybe the universe is built out of information at some exactly. fundamental level. And maybe it isn't. Yeah, yeah. So, this is just a, a speculation. Yeah. If you enjoyed this clip, please consider subscribing to the channel and hit the like button as this would help this content be visible to the YouTube algorithm. You can watch the full interview here. To support the channel, you can join us on Patreon, which for now supports both my Arabic and my English channels. See you soon.